Okay, Satnam, everybody. Happy Portal Day. Happy um, um, Everything Day. Happy Everything Day. Everything's happening today. It's like um, full moon in Pisces. It's the partial lunar eclipse. We're coming into the equinox. Um, I think there's something else I'm missing. Maybe that's enough. But um, it's kind of not a big big eclipse like celestially speaking it's not like a super powerful energy shift that's happening because it's not physical but for us for us like uh woo woo people this is this is our this is our this is our time <laughs> uh, full moon in pisces is the woo woo time to shine and this day is like, you know, when it becomes fall, everybody gets a little spookier. Everybody gets into like skeletons and spiders and scary movies and stuff like that. And it's because the physical is falling away. Like the, the trees are shedding their leaves. The physical body is not the star anymore. It's the spiritual body that becomes the star in this time. So... I also love that I'm saying star because today is like such a star energy. It's the 17th. It's the card of the star. It's so much, but um, oh, now I got lost in my own hypnotic loop. So sad. <laughs> That's so sad. My thoughts are like <sighs> portal energy. I'm about to get my turban on and it will get better. But I was saying the physical body is no longer the star. The spiritual body becomes the star because the spiritual realm is um like on top like it cycles through both like the physical material world like summer equinox i think is like the day of man and then so um autumnal equinox is like the day of the spirit and we shift into this season of the spirit because our spirit is rising subtle realms are rising the ancestors are on top of our heads <laughs> like this day is the opening of the Pitru Paksh, which is the um, kind of the walk of the ancestors. Um, people who know that like our dimensions become closer in this time, use this time to kind of fix things and shift things and uplift things for their ancestors because we're so tied that if you uplift your ancestors then you uplift yourself, it shifts your reality when there's shifts too. So. Um, while we have this closeness, people will take this opportunity to make offerings in their name, to do rituals for them, to connect with them, to see like if they need anything, if they have any advice to give, if they have any counsel to give, or just like to connect um, because not a lot of us know our ancestral lineage. And a lot of people watching this video um, we'll see a lot of contact happening around this time from celestial beings, from light beings, from galactics, from ETs, from angelics, because your ancestors are, um, are stellar. They, they go beyond this terrestrial plane. So the ancestral realm, you know, is multidimensional and you might get a lot of, um, kind of paranormal things beginning to happen in these next few days. There are these beautiful beings um, called the, I call them star nymphs. I know in our realm, um, a nymph is like something that's tied to an element. And that's very true. Like all elements that kind of weave and make up our dimension um, have actual personified beings that exist in realms. Um, and because our realm is still, our consciousness is still bound to material things, our elements are only the material elements. They're only like the, um, the things that we can see, you know, like fire, water, earth, air, sometimes ether. People debate about ether, but the, it goes beyond. There's a lot of other threads in this dimensional weave. And one of the elements the subtle elements that makes up this realm is light. There's sound, consciousness, um, prana. There's a lot of other unseen things that constitute as elements to our 
to our guides, to our advanced beings, but I guess we're just not there yet. We're just not like remembering yet, but there's um, the element of light. Light is an actual element and it has um, beings that <laughs> like light being, <laughs> like light beings, you know what I mean? Light beings. So <laughs> um, there are these kind of nymph-like beings for lack of a better word, I think in Hinduism, they would be called apsaras. They're like these beautiful things that just hold it down for certain elements. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Um, but so these star nymphs, right? They used to walk around with us. They, we used to all exist together. People always like talk about seeing nymphs and elves. And the Greeks and the Romans talked about them a lot and their weird um, demonic religion where they would like rape them a lot and they would have to turn into trees to get away from the gods, um, the things that were passing as gods. Oh, see the baby's crying. <laughs> that's not my baby, that's somebody else's baby. Crying about the, the Roman empire. <clears throat> so these nymph-like beings used to be with us and uh, they even talk about Astrea who, is the sign of Virgo and how she was the last immortal that left humanity. She tried to stay. <laughs> she tried to stay with us. She was this being, um, this kind of star nymph being, celestial being who was the goddess of justice. I think some people called her the goddess of justice. And when we were shifting, when our consciousness was like kind of degrading, um, the immortal beings and the gods that used to be very close with us in physical connection with us uh, could no longer exist. That boundary got thicker and thicker and farther and farther away. And Estrella was one of the last ones <laughs> that like tried to stay with us. And the stories make it seem like eventually she just got like frustrated and she was like, it's just, I can't live here anymore and left. And like um her energy is very much the energy of Virgo but um kind of as we've forgotten and fallen and our minds have fallen our memories have fallen our ability to see has fallen even her symbol has changed she's become uh earthbound she used to have wings they used to depict the symbol of Virgo with wings and now she holds like wheat I think Hold on. I can see you. Yeah, so it's she's just holding like a shaft of wheat. There's nobody here. Do, 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 do. But she used to have wings. She used to have wings made out of stars. Astrea literally means star. So the nymphs want to give Virgo her wings back. And they want to give all of the beings who have held bodies with wings in past lives. They wanna give those templates back because they um, they take us out of this earthly material realm by choice and um, just not so much I like physically growing wings, but so a lot of us have like these past lives where or um, terrible memories of getting their wings removed in like sometimes very violent ways. That seems to be like a past life memory that holds with a lot of us. And because there were these crazy timelines where um, celestial beings were ritualis ritualistically and systematically attacked during falls of consciousness and those traumas some peripherally hold and we are never like able to access those higher realms and those higher dimensions um, with those kind of big traumatic blocks in our field. So during this portal, going into this um, equinox portal, this eclipse is opening um, really the thinning of the veil where our celestial guides can begin returning big big physical kind of physical mostly subtle upgrades to us and one of the the upgrades that are being given to a lot of us now 
is this return of the wings. And it's kind of something that is such a magnetic vibration when it's in somebody's aura. When somebody has like their wings activated in their aura, they're so magnetic and so almost impossible to ignore. <laughs> and it's a contagion. It's like an activating frequency. Even if one person has that kind of template in their field, everyone who comes into contact with them um, come kind of takes on that same pattern and even if briefly just for a few seconds they can hold a really high elevated consciousness so this is something that our guides that these higher celestial beings are really interested in reawakening and and those who are resonant with it so they're with us now. If you are connected to this video, you are connected to the star nymphs. You are connected to the celestials because they are with me now. And their energy is so electric and so buzzy. And so um, just, you'll feel it, you'll feel it. And they're helping me, they helped me to create um, an activation that activates the template of the star wings. And they um, helped me kind of curate this very special yoga practice that we're going to do today um, that is like angel yoga. <laughs> it's literally like, like angelic yoga, not the Rosicrucian one, like, like yoga that, um, that angels do. When I was in a deep channeling session with them, I took down some notes of things that I felt like were really important. Um, and the one thing that they kept saying over and over again was the, these are the wings of transformation. Activating these wings is activating a transformative energy. And they call us starlings. <laughs> they called us um, beloved starlings. Um, as these energies that are coming in now through this eclipse portal are kind of dancing and moving through our cosmic field, you're going to start unfurling these little wings of transformation. They start in the back of the heart center. They come from the back of the heart chakra and this little, little pranic pocket that's hidden between the vertebrae in a physical sense. And in the subtle body sense, it's like right in the back of the heart chakra is the base of the wings. And a lot of people get kind of that kundalini backache in the middle of their back. Um, really itchy shoulder blades, kind of like this never ending nagging ache when that center starts to activate and open and release. And um, that is this template awakening in you. So they're also saying that we, many of us have been feeling this intense need to organize and to clean and to kind of like clear all the cobwebs out of our earthliness. And that's because that's happening also in subtle levels. So if you suddenly have become a very like neat person, mess is bothering you, you're like cleaning the thing that has been sitting there for weeks or even months. It's this thing activating with you, within you. It's so exciting. Um, they're saying this earth, <laughs> copper's chasing fairies. Hi, Bubby. Hold on, there's a bee. I feel like I've been under attack with distraction lately. Jeez. Um, just kidding. Okay, this urge isn't just a restlessness. It might feel like a restlessness or an anxiety. They're saying that it's more like a prep. It's more like a preparation. So the clarity you're kind of seeking in your physical spaces is not just in the physical realm. Always think like, Whatever is coming in, whatever is new, whatever is changing, whatever is shifting is coming from a higher dimension. So this need to clear and be organized and neat is coming down from a higher dimension. And I wrote that, um, they call it, we're clearing the space of our mind's garden. They speak very poetically. They, the mind's garden is being prepped. The soil is being tilled, the weeds are being pulled out. It's getting like organized. All the tools are being ordered from Amazon. I'm sure you've been ordering a bunch of things. <laughs> um, I know I have. So when I wrote this, it was a while ago, but they said in these coming days, there's gonna be a burst of clarity that's gonna light up a path that has seemed hidden, that has seemed completely hidden to you. There's gonna be this like 
aha moment of like, oh, that's how I get there. And it seems so simple now. So pay really close attention to all the whispers of your intuition, especially around like the 22nd. On the 22nd, you should mark it in your calendar now. You should just put it in your Google calendar, like on the 22nd, like pay attention to dreams, pay attention to signs, pay attention to synchronizations, pay attention to hunches, intuition, because that day is when um, the preparation of this garden is kind of going to take effect. So they also said there were some objects that were encoded that you can look for around that time. So if you see like a key, or a feather or a music note <laughs> i'm so serious if you guys just find a random key remember this or a feather shows up for you or you see like a music note somewhere and it just sticks out to you remember that these are the symbols that have been encoded in the consciousness and our guides work from this like subtle conscious layer you know so it's like they can make certain things just stand out to you all of a sudden colors just become really loud to me i'll start seeing purple everywhere or blue everywhere and blue's always been everywhere but it's just within me that kind of thing has been um amplified so pay attention to those things music notes feathers and keys especially around the 22nd i guarantee you'll find it on the 22nd and it's gonna it's gonna serve as this like validating sign for you um when you get it just remember to tend to the details we're moving virgo's moving into libra and that's also very interesting because libra has the scales astrea was like the goddess of justice she had scales she was like the winged one she was the one that left and we're kind of like shifting into this this justice portal and all of these things are opening up to us but they're saying to pay attention to the details tend to the details like a virgo for it is in the small precise actions that you unlock the door to your next chapter this is a quote from nymphs <laughs> i don't talk like this it is in the small precise actions that you will unlock the door to your next chapter pay attention pay attention look for the keys and the feathers okay so to help us with this we're going to do some yoga we're going to do some angelic yoga um just to get us into this space of clearing our mental garden um bringing our tattvas into uh synchronization so we can upgrade them because when you activate your wings you activate a higher set of tattvas you get like a whole nother kind of subtle mind okay so I had to cover my head. Oh yeah, if you guys ever like teach these practices to your friends, that's cool. Like absolutely share these practices with everybody who will listen. But if you teach these meditations, like if you're in the position of passing the information to someone who has never had it before, then you should cover your head with a white something. I've seen people do it with beanies last minute, like, cause there's nothing else around. I see people teach Kundalini yoga with beanies a lot. I don't know about that. Cause they're never like cotton, you know, it's always like a polyester thing. I don't know why I, I, don't, I wouldn't want polyester on my arc line while I'm teaching Kundalini yoga. That's just me personally. Um, maybe I don't have the upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> the polyester upgrade but when you're teaching it if you're ever like with somebody and you're like yo you got to try this meditation cover your head okay let's tune in so rub your hands together and inhale deep pull the root lock up but um, sex organs come up hold the breath Exhale and inhale. Pull everything up. Move the energy up the spine, out of the top of the head. Roll the eyes up. Look at the third eye. Hold the breath. Exhale. And inhale to tune in. Oh.
together cover yourself in a bubble of light golden light energy or an ultraviolet light energy and exhale inhale to chant the protection mantra <laughs> Ad good and a me to God, good and a me, Sat good and a me, City Guru de Hiva Vehi Name. Ad good and a me to God, good and a me, Sat good and a me, City Guru de Hiva the tip of the tongue up against the roof of the mouth roll the eyes up and in push the energy upwards good and exhale and that mantra is a good mantra to just have on the tip of your tongue in the upcoming months because it's going to get crazy and uh activating like these kind of protective etheric um structures like wings wings are very protective angelic beings wrap wings around them to protect them from all sorts of frequencies and unseen things like what's kind of going on in our world so it's definitely something that you want to get into like um, if unseen things are hurting me then i want to have an unseen way of defending myself which is like etheric bodyguards etheric uh wings having a ways to shield yourself with sound with light with sound and light is actually better just light doesn't really cut it sound and light even if you're thinking um, a mantra and kind of thinking it all around you and putting it in a light pattern all around you that does so much to a space to a subtle space that affects the people who are around you if someone's attacking you if something's seen or unseen anything like that just because there is a lot of energy going down that um can can go wackadoodle crazy so let's get into this this <laughs> meditation put your peace signs up like this by your shoulders and in close your close your eyes and inhale and open the fingers and exhale and close the fingers so inhale open the peace sign exhale close the peace sign inhale open Exhale, close. Only breathing breathing through the nose, please. And just go with that pattern for now. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. If you've done this practice before, don't leave yet. <laughs> just get into... When you're moving the fingers, there's also this same pattern happening in your mind and we're gonna work a lot now keep going while i'm talking don't stop and listen keep <laughs> meditating i talk through meditation um so inhale open exhale close so you're gonna um feel for what's also happening kind of in the mental space while you're doing these movements
Okay, now you're going to bring all of your consciousness to the top of your head, to your crown. And you're going to kind of let yourself slip out of your head. Keep with the fingers, stay with the breath. And look down at yourself. Let your subtle eyes look down at your physical body. See yourself safely covered in that bubble of golden light, breathing safely, fingers moving, the chest rising and falling with the breath. See yourself breathing and just covered with light and secure and move upwards. Let your subtle body float to the top of your room if you're inside. And see in the whole of your room, see everything that's surrounding you. Let yourself see little details. And then like a string is tied around you, you're pu being pulled upwards, float out of your home, look down on the building that you are inside of, at the neighborhood that's surrounding you. See the animals and the cars moving and then keep being pulled upwards into the sky, <clears throat> going through the clouds. Very quickly, let the sky turn dark and become quiet like space. Keep breathing, inhale open, exhale close. Start to see stars in your mind and let yourself find the gas giants Saturn and Jupiter. Let your consciousness lead you to Saturn and Jupiter. When you see them, when you find them, begin moving them in your mind with your breath, with your fingers. As your fingers come apart, Saturn and Jupiter swing apart. And as your fingers come together, Saturn and Jupiter come together to touch. Moving with your breath, moving with your fingers, move the planets with your mind.
Keep moving Saturn and Jupiter with your breath. If you've drifted off and you stop moving your fingers, keep moving the fingers. Okay, hold the fingers open and make an O shape with your mouth. Hold the fingers open wide and tight. And through the O mouth, you're going to breathe like this. wide hold the breath in squeeze the body tense up the body squeeze the body squeeze the spine exhale 
You're gonna do this two more times. Inhale and squeeze. Exhale. Inhale last time, squeeze in. Squeeze, this is grounding the energy and this is circulating it through the entire field. So squeeze, squeeze the spine. Good, and relax and roll the head, roll the neck, roll the jaw. Roll all of this part of your body here. Roll the shoulders. And you let that energy move down and upward, very clean. Let it circulate throughout the body. For Keep going. Keep rolling the neck. Just 30 seconds. Rolling the jaw. Rolling the shoulders. Rolling the head. Getting all of that energy that you just brought your hemispheres of your mind into union and now that has to integrate into your entire energy field so roll it and let it move down okay beautiful relax okay so now bring your fingers to this pad of your palm like this it's kind of uncomfortable but that's okay so the finger pads are touching this pad those electrical contact points have to be made. No excuses. I know it hurts. Just do it. Um, so you're going to put your thumbs on your temple. So squeeze your back molars. Squeeze your teeth in the back of your jaw. And feel for movement in your head. And you're going to put your thumb right on that spot. Okay. So you're going to put your hands like this. And you're going to squeeze your back molars, not really hard, just enough to movement. And every time you squeeze, it's very rhythmic, but every time you squeeze, you're going to think in your mind, sa, ta, na, ma, sa, ta, na, ma. So close your eyes and begin squeezing. And with every squeeze in your mind, you're saying sa, ta, Na, ma. And if you can do advanced meditation, see the sounds moving in the back of your mind through the third eye out into forever land. And keep going. We're going to do this for three minutes. <clears throat>
inhale then exhale and relax your hands down okay so now you're gonna put your hands right on your knees hands on your knees <laughs> you can put your hands on your knees you can't see my knees like this okay and um you're going to inhale and flex the spine all the way forward sorry all the way forward and exhale and round the spine all the way back so inhale bring the chest part forward exhale make it a hollow cave push all the air out of the body And make sure the movement stays in your spine. It's not your head flopping everywhere. Your head is right in the center over the spine movement. We're gonna do this for three minutes. Close your eyes and go into the breath. You can think, sa, no, sa, no, sa, no, sa. Keep going, keep meditating. I played the wrong vibes. Okay, inhale, come all the way forward. Push the heart all the way forward. Hold the breath in, pull the root lock up. Look at the third eye. Exhale, all of the breath out of the body, round the back. Pull the root lock up. Pull the breath out. Pull the root lock, good. Inhale, come neutral. And just breathe in normally. It is the vibes. Okay, so use your right hand. Kind of elbow bend, <clears throat> palm down, fingers straight. 
you are going to move the palm all the way to the right as far as you can it's kind of awkward and come back center and then move it all the way to the left and come back center all the way to the right center left center okay close your eyes left center right center left center Pay attention to the movement, the shift in your breath. Feel how the breath is changing with the movement. Notice the link. Okay, now open your eyes and bring both hands up, but both palms down, and you're going to kind of put them together. Thumbs are not touching. Um, but kind of more in front of the chest, right? And you're going to look at them. Your eyes are going to be open. You're going to put your pinky all the way down and up, then your right ring finger all the way down and up, the middle Saturn finger all the way down and up, and the Jupiter finger all the way down and up. Okay, and you're looking down at your hands while you're doing this. <coughs> okay, keep going. Okay, notice any resistance to looking at them. This is synchronizing the mind, so pay attention. Okay, if you kind of start looking above them or around them, bring the focus back to the hands and the pattern. <laughs>
the hands down. That is such an interesting meditation. Um, these are called tattvas in the yogic science and they're connected to planets. And that's what's so, when we were going through like teaching what to teach for this particular eclipse, it was like activating the tattvas because they're still like Jupiter, Saturn, the sun and Mercury, like the most apparent material planets to us. Um, and when you activate these astral bodies and they have tattvas, like the wings are connected to the mind, the heart mind, the higher heart and that connection. And it, um, they have their own tattvas that they're connected to and they're celestial. They're like, um, not planetary. They're like luminary. They're like, um, they get fed from the prana from the sun or from the reflective prana from the moon. Like there's a lunar wing and a solar wing and they have these tattvic connections in your mind the same way like when you point your finger at something and you're like sending that Jupiter energy towards like expanding it and making it happen or the, the bad finger as Charlie calls it. When you give somebody that finger, you're giving them the Saturn energy. When we apply kumkum to our heads uh, or sometimes vibhuti to our heads, you only do it with the ring finger. And I notice women who do makeup also, even not knowing anything about a tattva, not knowing anybody anything about like this being their sun finger, they do this. They're like blending their makeup with this finger. And I'm like, that is so funny because that is the finger that you're supposed to like apply things with because it gives you radiance. It gives you luminance. It gives you the light of the sun. You know what I mean? And I think people have all of these subconscious awarenesses. But yeah, so that exercise was really like bringing your tattva and your tattvic power into alignment. And it's really interesting if you like struggle looking at both at the same time because so many of us uh cannot accept our own power looking at how powerful we are just observing it in synchronization is like your subconscious is like oh, i don't know i'm gonna look over here i'm gonna think about something else um so that's really interesting okay let's get into it. so getting more into these channeled messages from the nymphs well the second really big a um, message they wanted to share was that connection of heart and mind, the angelic wings, the um, etheric wings bridge the heart mind connection. They have their own intelligence and they activate a higher intelligence in you. Um, one of the most powerful experiences I had when I was working with these codes was um, yeah, walking around and holding the, the energy of um, subtle wings was a little bit hard at first, but then it was really easy. But when we were going through the practices, my guides were having me move them. And when I was moving them, and this is why they made the activation like they did, it's literally like a neural pattern, repatterning, reactivating of like a higher thought. When I was like moving them individually, it was like activating these tattvas, but like not in my brain, like in this higher heart mind. And it was um, kind of opening me back up to the space of when I was connected to that mind, when I was connected to that body that was with its full kind of etheric wings with that template, it uh, it's all very, very interesting. So the heart-mind connection is something that's going on right now. And purging, as we're going through this portal, that was being purged. And they were saying that the balance between your desires and the needs of those around you have become very strained. And you might notice that if this is um, an activation that you're going through right now, you might notice a tension between what you want to do and what um, your children, your partner, your coworkers, whatever wants to do. There's becoming like this strain between it and it's pulling at your heartstrings is what they were saying. And asking you to make choices for yourself and others like your choices are 
um, people are paying for your choices and you're becoming very aware of it. Like you're becoming very aware that what you choose to do is affecting other people and it might be making you feel kind of guilty actually. Um, so they were saying, um, make sure that you're like making choices that honor both yourself and others. So not just honoring self, not just honoring the other, finding that middle ground that honors both is kind of key. And they're saying to expect a confrontation. So expect a conversation. It will be very pivotal, a very pivotal discussion with like a partner, with a friend, even with you, even with your inner self. Um, it's a dialogue that can occur probably tomorrow, like in the energy of tomorrow, right after the eclipse is done. Um, that energy will be just ripe and right there and like looking for something to plant into. Um, this conversation, right, that might happen tomorrow, the 18th or maybe the day after, it's going to illuminate one of your truest desires. This is really important. Because a lot of people don't know what they want. I notice most of the time people want to manifest, manifest, manifest. But I'm like, what are you, why are you manifesting an apartment and a job and something so low and menial and not even a dream? Why don't you manifest something that like you truly want? Do you really want to work? Do you really want to live in a two bedroom apartment? Or do you want to live in like a cottage in the woods and never have to like work again and have a garden full of goats or a homestead or live? You know what I mean? Like, I think people... um have been so disconnected from their truest self that their goals have become everybody else's goals. I want to be an influencer. I want to be on YouTube. I want to be a gamer. And it's just because everybody else is doing it. And nobody looks at their self long enough to be like, well, what do I actually want? Because once I achieve these things, I'm still empty inside. So like, and it's because it's somebody else's dream. You saw somebody else, uh, you know, smile because they gained fame or celebrity and you're like, well, that's the way that I also achieve that smile. And it's not you, but the answer to your joy, following your joys within, and that needs the mind and the heart to come into a cohesion. They can't be battling each other. The mind wants to do this logical safe thing. Oh, I posted this poem, the caption of this poem on my Instagram today, because it was just perfect it like made me cry I want to kind of find it and see if I can put it in the in something here um because it was written by this Himalayan yogi and it was just like how he had been choosing sanity because it was so safe and he always felt like the screams of madness you know um echoing from outside and he ignored them and then his sanity was like killing him it was slowly killing him and he had to go into like this whimsical space and that's where the soul loves to be when the heart and the mind have become friends and that's what's coming up now and that's what's coming up when we activate the back of the heart chakra when those wings unfurl and come out the higher mind and the higher heart also become one so um yeah what were they what they were specifically saying about that conversation that's going to come up is to be aware of it because it may come cloaked in conflict or like a hesitation um like, so if it's like an argument coming at you or it kind of feels hostile, don't back away from it. Like, this is the treasure, right? This is the thing that's going to make you realize one of your son comes by your heart's desire, you know, why you came here. So don't shrink away from this exchange, they said. Instead, approach it with the grace of a celestial dancer. These are the nymphs speaking. <laughs> These are the nymphs speaking. Approach it with the grace of a celestial dancer. And the meditation we're going to do now gives grace. It gives you grace. It gives you this, like, um, no matter what's coming at me, it's going to be coming through this veil of grace. And whatever I'm giving is also being pushed through this veil of grace. So, um... And visualize yourself holding scales. So this was really, really powerful. Sometimes there's these visual keys, these codes that you can envision in your consciousness that will just create a certain effect in your reality. And it can be really, really simple symbols that 
um, might be counterintuitive or something you would never to think like to imagine scales when somebody is arguing with you but this was given to us directly from celestial beings so they're saying imagine if, you, if you're in this conversation or any conversation in the future where it's getting hostile there is conflict to step back from it and come really impersonal to it and to watch it keenly observe it do not get hurt by what people are saying don't take it any of it personal, but become super curious, like become super interested, almost like that, right? So you're stepped back, you've, you've zoomed out, that's what the wings are good for, giving you that height of perspective, you zoomed out, right? And you're starting to envision these scales, like the weighing scales, like you see the Lady of Liberty holding, um, but these are scales made of stardust. These are like bright, um, pixie dust scales right and just see them and kind of weighing each word that's coming at you through this veil of wisdom and love right and that that moment will be your moment to harmonize a very discordant frequency that has been discordant for years okay something that's been kind of just like oh that's that thing that bugs me that moment when you're in that like conflict maybe tomorrow maybe the next day and you're like looking at it and you're like oh this is what those talking about and you start envisioning the scales um you'll the the words coming at you or however it's coming at you will start being weighed through that veil of justice that veil of the celestial beings of justicia you know and um you can start seeing them for the purity of their origin because everybody has a pure origin even the person that's attacking you and you can weigh them with love you can look at them with compassion you can look at them with wisdom and finally harmonize this karmic thing that's just been like making the wrong note in your life for a very long time so we're going to do some more meditations that help us with that okay so you're gonna close your eyes And you're going to bring your arms to the side. <clears throat> and you're going to start to do your version of flying. It can be very graceful. It can be powerful. It can be short. However you think you fly, whatever is your vibe of flight pattern. We're making, recreating your flight pattern. So your eyes are closed and you're going to just let your arms move like you're flying. Whatever you set as your flight pattern, you must keep. We're creating a new neural pattern. Okay. Imagine you're traveling a very long distance. You're flying a long distance. Then just breathe and fly.
Make the breath deep, move the flight pattern. We're putting the wings back into the auric structure. Let's breathe and fly. Getting closer to your destination, keep flying the exact same way. Your flight pattern is being magnetized into your magnetic body. Just keep moving your arms and breathing. I see some of you guys flying over water, long stretches of land. Some of you have your dragons with you. Just keep flying, we're almost there.
Keep imagining you're flying higher. Go higher now. Elevate yourself. Elevate the perspective in your meditation. Return your wings. Return the flight pattern to the magnetic structure of the aura. Fly higher. We're almost there. It's the last two minutes. Keep flying. <clears throat> Last 30 seconds. Keep flying. Aren't you tired of walking on these feet? Don't you want to return your mental pattern to your true celestial state? Let's put it back in. Keep flapping your arms, breathing deeply. We're almost there. And spread the arms now stiff. Make the fingers stiff, make the arms stiff and imagine you're gliding. Close the eyes and glide. You're gliding now, you're out. You're coming to where you're landing. You're gliding there and your arms are stiff and you feel the wind moving around your arms, your face and your body. Toughen every muscle, the shoulder, the neck, the momentum of all of the movement, the flight pattern you just did is pushing the glide. And you're like steel, last 30 seconds, holding the visualization of gliding. Glide strong, feel the wind. Keep gliding, you're 10 seconds away. shake out the arms, shake out the legs. So that meditation that we just did um, with that mantra, putting the flight pattern back into the aura, back into the mind, um, <laughs> it creates a radiance like you've never seen. Like you always see angels connected with light light beings connected with light or um, having shining heads or circles around their head, it's of light. That's because the element of light kind of, um, whoa, sorry. Light is doing weird things on my plant right now. Um, <clears throat> the element of light is, <laughs> it behaves differently to with light beings and you can bring that light into your Aura. like humans have it so 
amazing because we can choose our program like we if we have the awareness that this is a, a video game you can play like which program you want to run and um you can activate like whatever guna you want to play and you can be behave like a demon and you can behave like um or an animal will more say um the behaviors that we call demonic are very animalistic material physical behaviors and you can bounce between that kind of tamasic guna or the rajasic guna where you behave like a man and you want to conquer everything you want to acquire everything you want to like sit on it like a dragon on top of all of its stuff like you know everything is mine territory territory fight for property and stuff like that that's a very rajasic quality the raja the kingly quality and then there's this sattvic quality that's kind of above all of those things and that's what we activate when we reawaken these patterns within our astral subtle bodies and our mental bodies and that ajaya lay i was talking a little bit about it but it gives you so much grace if there's one mantra that you kind of want to have <clears throat> in this weird world of like all of the weird mental attacks and it's really easy to become neurotic about things. The JLA gives you a power over the nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And it translates to us as grace. Um, and, and it activates the radiant body. And the radiant body is the 10th body of your subtle body system. You have, you have a body that is just um expressing the radiance that is being powered through the subtle body like the subtle body is the wattage of of your radiance if that makes sense and the subtle body is so interesting too because the subtle body is connected to your self-image so how you see yourself is how much power your subtle body has so if you visualize yourself as like this kind of helpless human who can't you know the you know is just the government does what it wants and this power has over me and this negative entity has done this to me and and this and what am I going to do and you know I'm just here and everything sucks if that's how you visualize yourself that's how much power your subtle body has and that's why a lot of times we have these magical experiences because of our past lives we're born with the capacity to dream walk or to astral project but we have it's not consistent we can't do it when we want to do it we can't go where we want to go we can't like have the conscious control over those realms because our subtle body is what's maneuvering through those realms and our subtle body has no power because we think of ourselves like shit and that's really why the self-image has been attacked. Most people cannot even visualize themselves. Most um, multidimensional beings, if I say, close your eyes, can you see yourself? They can't. They are so disconnected from this body and from this experience and, you know, just kind of wanting to get it over with, it seems like. Um, but so that's why, like, if you imagine yourself as Hanuman, if you're just in your mind thinking of yourself everything that you're doing, Hanuman is doing it. You're like channeling Hanuman. If that becomes the power of your subtle body. That's why when the yogis are constantly meditating upon the form of Shiva, constantly meditating upon the form of Devi, I'm always like putting details about like these forms um, so they can be in your mind because they're keys. They're literally keys. If you think of yourself, um, if we re program that mental pattern that you're walking around with wings on your back then your subtle body carries that power and angels doors open for angelic beings and astral and in this realm um walking around with that kind of activation in your body opens doors in astral realms that probably wouldn't open for you before um and just even walking in our realm of reality with your wings in your awareness um even if it's not even in your like active awareness if it's in your active awareness it's very powerful just think like if you do the activation you'll feel it you'll feel, it's hard to deny it opens this space 
it opens the heart. There's this fearlessness that comes when your wings are back. There's this confidence that comes. You have this perimeter, this barrier around you. You know you can't be touched. You know you can't be fucked with. You know you can always just kind of whenever you want, you know, and you're receiving energy from these higher celestial fields. Anyway, let's get into the nymphs, the nymphs message about radiance because that's what we just activated your radiance so oh radiant ones the venusian beings have been working with the fire element lately and they've been putting it into our heart chakras and um you might feel like a tug um especially because it has the venusian energy you might have this longing to express yourself in a way that you haven't and to be seen and to feel good in what you are being seen in. And that has to do with the self-image and the subtle body and the power that a wonderful self-image gives to your subtle body, right? Um, so this fire in your heart that's starting to be stirred with the Venusian energy um, makes you want to be bold, makes you want to be a little bit grander, makes you, in the next coming week, you might be drawn to just acts of self-expression. Excuse me. Truly expressing yourself. I just expressed myself. <laughs> you might be called to dance. You might be called to make music. There's really, um, there's a lot going on in music right now. There's a lot going on in the music notes. There's a lot of secrets going on in music. So if music is talking to you right now, you know why. If it's a different kind of music you've never listened to before, different artists, something that is intentional. Um, so, around the 20th oh they're saying if there's any adornments that speaks to your soul beauty like wings you should definitely get them but also physical stuff like the venusian energy will definitely make you be called to shop definitely make you be called to like do something with your hair suddenly to do something about your skin or whatever it is whatever it is that hasn't really been on your mind about your physical appearance or how you express Maybe you're making art, maybe you're making poetry, maybe you're making music suddenly, but it has to come out. Um, and the 20th, that energy really, really ramps up. And you'll see it kind of flooding out of you so much that the um, the matrix will have to respond. So you'll see like um, if you're doing this yoga practice now and if you do the activation or you don't do the activation, whatever, that still is going on. You'll see like around the 20th, you'll start getting like a lot of compliments or people will just notice your expression a little bit more. Um an unexpected compliment or a gesture from another will reaffirm this radiant glow, they're saying. And this isn't just for vanity. It is a call from the stars. This will literally be a message from uh, higher orders to remember your radiance. So in those moments where you're getting compliments and you're getting people noticing how you're expressing yourself, remember like my astral wings are activated and up and like, just think about them. Just thinking about them brings them into reality. Okay, um, so embrace, they're saying embrace this vibe, embrace this warmth, <clears throat> cause it's a beacon that will draw others into your orbit of joy. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do our last practice for this energy. And even if you're not, even if you're watching this, um, not during the eclipse portal, not during the full moon, not during any of this, all of the energy still holds. All of the activations still hold. It will still work. Just so still do it. Um, because having people walking around in the matrix with activated um, astral technology that they're aware of that is for the side of light and for the side of like sharing light and giving radiance and giving protection that it's something that i'm so here for i'm so here for just and just having like a few people walking around with these codes in their auras all it really takes um yeah definitely pulls people into your orbit of joy um, okay, so we're going to do this last thing, bringing the heavens down to earth, literally. This is what you do when you activate your star wings, you become a bridge. 
Earth angels are bridges. There is a lot that you can do because you have a human body. You have a human voice. You have a human sound. You can affect this matrix in ways that our guides can't because they have to behave subtly. I don't know what's happening with this camera. They have to behave from the periphery. They have to come from the sidelines. They can't have a direct interface. Only once in a while can they show up to somebody and be like, hey, t -t -t do this, you know? Channels, mediums sometimes get that experience a lot, but you know, we get these, uh, we get these constant conversations with celestial beings, but for most people, it's once in a while, it's little glimpses, it's little shadows, little hints, it's little things that I don't know, it can be dismissed, it cannot, you know, um, so, <laughs> I talk about subtle beings my consciousness leaves this realm and I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore but what I was saying is angels guides galactics whatever it is ancestors whatever it is that you're working with that is not with the human body have um, a subtle influence on us and you have a direct influence on us so when you are connected to subtle realms through things like star wing activations or whatever and you have this human body, you are so powerful because you have direct influence. You have become like an open channel from heaven to earth. And so we're going to do this meditation that will make that um, very strong, very strong within you. So here are your hands. Your hands are like this in Gyan Mudra, the Jupiter fingers touching the thumb, and they're just kind of here. I have no idea what happened to my chuni. I keep looking for it. I guess I left it somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so the hands are like this. They're just kind of hanging out here and they're relaxed, the elbows bend. And you're going to kind of, hmm. Oh yeah, it's a super moon too. That was the other thing that it was. Okay, I rem now I found my chuni. Okay, so you're going to have the hand here you're gonna like i'm leaning back so you can see it's a twist you like twist up and touch this outer upper part of your aura and then twist back and then twist up twist back okay so i'm gonna play the mantra and show you how it goes because it goes with the breath but they pretty much say satanam satanam why guru why guru and you're gonna go satanam satanam why guru why guru and your eyes are gonna be nine tenths closed so there's like a little slit at the bottom i'm gonna inhale up exhale down inhale up exhale down you might not want to worry about the eyes until you get the breath and the movement okay so get ready let me get my timer on <clears throat> okie dokie sorry okay don't chant I'm just showing you how it goes. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Satanam, Satanam. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. And close the eyes. Nine tenths, leave a little crack at the bottom. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Good, keep going.
a very graceful twist. It's a lot of grace in this movement. You're pulling heaven down to your heart center. Good. Satnam, Satnam, why guru, why guru.
keep moving the arms, Satnam, Y Guru bridges the earth elementals with the etheric elementals. And we are going to bridge, make you the bridge. We're stepping through a threshold in about 30 seconds. Where this will be very physical, this dimensional shift. You'll have to bring it out with your sound. Keep moving the hands as I'm talking. You shouldn't stop. In about 10 seconds now, we'll be walking through a dimension. And now chant. Chant along. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, chant and move. Vai Guru, Vai Guru. The eyes are still open. Nine tenths, one slit of light coming in. And you're chanting. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Satinam, Satinam, Vai Guru, Vai Guru. Keep chanting.
Guru, Salte Nam, Salte Nam, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Salte Nam, Salte Nam, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru. Become the bridge. Keep chanting. You're almost finished. Exhale, hold the position, inhale again, squeeze, powerfully squeeze the body, squeeze the spine, pull the root lock, push the energy upwards, no downward releases, slow, and exhale, and last time, inhale and squeeze, pull the root lock up, powerful squeeze. Powerful squeeze and exhale. Hold the position. Begin breath of fire. This is the most important part. breath of fire keep going with the breath of fire we are creating unity from heaven to earth placing the infinite power inside of the finite vehicle keep going with the breath of fire this is the most important part of the exercise <laughs> Keep 
Don't drop the arms, don't drop the posture. Keep going. Two minutes. Last minute of breath of fire. Keep going. Hold the arms up. No more escaping this realm. We're bringing heaven to this place here. We don't have to get out of here. We don't have to go find heaven. We can become conduits of it. We can become channels, channeling celestial energies into this place like a fire hose. Keep going, last 30 seconds. Open up your heavenly container. And inhale, squeeze up. And exhale and relax. Beautiful. Beautiful. Insane. Insane. Amazing. Splendid for his work. Okay, so that was it for um, this star nymph curated um, yoga, angel yoga for opening up this space. Um, there's one more message from the nymphs of the stars, from the late nymphs. Um, these are for the dreamers. These are for the dream weavers, the ones that walk through the dream world. We, um, I say we, I don't dream. I, I, I know how to lucid dream when I have that like situation happen, but I don't have regular dreams, but I work with a lot of people who do. And, um, I teach dream yoga and, um, when you, have that capability a lot of times dreamers begin to really heavily rely on it it becomes like their consistent peek into what's actually going on like behind the scenes um even our daydreamers even our visionaries though that's still the same energy um that's still that same energy of like going into a different realm and I think that's charming. And going into a different realm and seeing little glimpses of things that come true in this realm or, you know, tell a secret about something. Anyway, so there's this energy moving with this Pisces full moon. Uh, you probably have noticed the nymphs were saying that the dreamers are feeling a sense of withdrawal. Um, kind of a confusion. <laughs> kind of a confusion happening in their dream space, the place where they're used to going consistently, um, even around your spiritual path. So even people who are on the spiritual path are kind of reaching this hiccup. It has a lot to do with Saturn retrograding, um, kind of weaving this dance through Pisces where you're like, um, might be having a lot of existential crises, might be like, slowing down in your consistency it can show up a lot of ways but for the dreamers and for the spiritual baddies there is um 
like the waters of your subconscious have been stirred is what they're saying and it's making it hard to see the bottom where it used to be really clear so around the 24th this is another date i love i love like um i love when we get these like concrete things to look forward to um instead of people being like you know maybe the white house will blow up maybe the sun is going to act no, the nymphs are like, look, on the 24th, there's this moment of stillness that's going to arrive within you. Um, this pause. And you'll catch like a glimpse of this forgotten dream. Something that you lost track of. Some, when this whole existential, I don't know, confusion started happening, you might have lost focus of this like precious dream that you had. And when you get that pause that's happening on the 24th, you're going to see it. You're going to catch a glimpse of it. And they said it could be a subtle calling. It could be a forgotten dream, but it's been patiently waiting. It's something that's been kind of like lifetime after lifetime waiting for you. To, to do something with it so this is not a time to force action is what they're saying the nymphs are saying just observe it and listen no acting upon anything at that moment but they do suggest um for us um and this is even if you're not a dreamer even if, if you're watching this if you got through those meditations and you listen out for the 24th um, when you catch that moment of stillness, that moment of clarity, they suggest a ritual for us to do um, using the elements. So <clears throat> lighting a blue candle is very powerful. Make sure you're getting something that's not made of crap. <laughs> if you're working with elemental work, if you're working with like the... I know that people say in spirituality, the intent is everything. But no, this is actual... Um, ways of manipulating reality with the elements of this planet and when you're working with candle magic or the energy of fire or lighting a lamp what you're burning the source of what you're burning is going to other dimensions it's your offering to the gods you know it's your when you make a wish on a birthday candle and blow it out the smoke is carrying your prana into higher dimensions where it's being interpreted and read and things are praying for you one way or another or like doing rituals for you or making things happen in your world based on that you know if you're burning a candle in a color you're kind of making a frequency offering and putting that field all around you um so if you're burning something made out of really nasty synthetic materials that it does not make higher dimensional elemental beings happy. It doesn't make, it's not something they want to run to, you know? So try the real, um, if you can get a butter candle, get a ghee candle, get a butter candle, burn a ghee lamp. Burning ghee creates an atmosphere of celestial energy. Burning ghee puts I don't know the exact scientific term, you can look it up, but it puts the thing in the atmosphere that makes rain come. Um, and you know, rain is kind of like how, uh, one way of um, kind of activating codes coming in. It, it just creates this cloud of divinity when you burn something that's an actual like caloric um, offering, right? So if you can find like a beeswax candle, those are nice. A soy candle, those are nice. But I really suggest like burning ghee if you can but for this particular ritual they want it to be blue and i don't think you can dye the ghee blue i don't know maybe you can put spirulina in it oh i want to try that did you guys just give me that idea <laughs> um so anyway burn a natural blue candle on the 24th and have that element of fire next to the element of water a clear bowl of water <clears throat> i don't know i <clears throat> feel like my voice is going into the back of my neck okay put a bowl a clear bowl of water next to the blue candle light the blue candle and then gaze into the surface of the water this in this window in this celestial pocket do this and then just read the reflection ask the reflection speak to it water is sentient water is listening water has a lot to share so you're going to telepathically or out loud excuse you mr cricket he agrees he agrees about the water having a lot to share we're going to ask the reflection to reveal to you what you have overlooked 
and then just wait just gaze and wait and it can come in thoughts it can come in, in images you can read the patterns on the water it's however it comes it could be a clear as day sentence you just trust what you see know that this is a gift from the deep know that this is a gift from your highest self okay um so that's it for this if you are really resonating with the practices that we just did um even if you're not even if you're like that was really hard i never want to do that <laughs> again <laughs> then um i suggest that you do them again um coming through the portal energy into the autumnal equinox and going forward we're still in the high holy days that opened during the lion's gate and this pisces full moon super moon is a super super duper holy day um i think that uh you should try the star wing activation i think that um, people walking around with activated wings in their astral body at like minimum would make people fearless and confident at maximum would activate like angelic clairvoyant superpowers like astral hopping levitating superpowers within people depending on how much you work with it and a lot of that has to do with like how much you can believe it how much you can let yourself believe it and remember it and use it when um in crunch times you know and and the times where you need to be like oh wings up or wings around me or like you know remembering to use your subtle gifts in these moments is one of the keys because we forget you know somebody starts getting in your face and yelling at you and you just become reactive there's not you're not leaving yourself that gap to be like let me put my wings up let me cast a silver circle around me or let me ch start chanting on good anime to god good anime so in your head you know what i mean so um what well, the stuff that we just did really puts you in a different perspective in an elevated space and activating the actual wings in your template is huge um the activation walks you through the exercises with your wings that activate the tattvas in your brain that activate the higher brain that is so trippy and so cool and so powerful you'll feel all sorts of weird twitches the reality responds to the wings now that's what i noticed um when they were walking me through like the exercises and stuff when i would like move one in one direction all of a sudden i got like a million text messages Brrr! like my phone was just going crazy and then i'd like move one another direction and then all the dogs in the neighborhood would start barking like it um really re the reality <laughs> the cricket agrees the reality responds to you starting to work with these etheric fingers like when you move your finger and touch something and it responds the reality responds to you moving this wing structure and then um it's just really really cool so yeah get all the way into it let's do three long sat noms because this is going to be a long video and inhale really deep bring the thumbs to the sternum sat to you such an honor to work with you such a privilege to share this timeline with you satnam happy eclipse happy full moon happy everything happy portal day happy new wings happy happy happy